I'm Don Brodell with the Arkansas Activities Association. Let's look at the new rules for basketball. Game and table officials. If utilizing the shot clock, the shot clock operator shall be located at the scores and timers table. This allows the officiating crew to quickly identify the person who is operating the shot clock should uh, there be a timing issue that needs to be addressed. Uniforms. Teammates may wear multiple styles of uniforms bottoms, including shorts, pants, or skirts, so long as they are light color. Not all team members need to wear the same style. However, all styles must meet the uniform requirements for visible manufacturers' logos and trademarks. If the visiting team is wearing undershirts with their dark jerseys, the undershirts may be a single solid color similar to the torso of the jersey or solid black. Team members may wear either solid black or solid red undershirts, but players on the same team cannot wear both. If players choose to wear an undershirt, all undershirts must be the same color. Bonus free throws, 4-8-1. Two free throws will now be awarded for all common fouls except for a player control foul or a team control foul beginning with the fifth foul in each quarter. Team fouls will be reset to zero at the end of each quarter, excluding the fourth quarter if an overtime period is needed. Resumption of play. After an out-of-bounds violation in either the front court or the back court by either team, the throw-in shall be at the designated spot nearest to where the ball went out of bounds. After a violation or a foul before the bonus is in effect by either team or any other stoppage in play, the throw-in location will be determined by the location of the violation, foul, or the location of the ball when the stoppage occurs. Front court throw-in. One of the newly established four designated spots, 28 foot mark along each sideline, or three feet outside the lane line along the end line. In the backcourt, the designated spot nearest the foul, violation, or other stoppage. Frontcourt throw-ins. Officials shall determine the throw-in spot by using an imaginary line. If the stoppage of play occurs inside the dotted imaginary line, the spot shall be the nearest point to the end line three feet outside the lane line. If the stoppage of play occurs outside the dotted imaginary line, the spot shall be the nearest 28-foot mark along each sideline. When an official administers a throw in to the wrong team, the official may now rectify this mistake at any time before the first dead ball after the ball becomes live, unless there is a change in possession. After the ball becomes dead or the correct team gains possession, the time to correct the mistake has expired. Out of bounds. A player may now step out of bounds as long as the player is not the first to touch the ball or the player did not step out of bounds to avoid a violation. Any player who steps out of bounds under the player's own volition and is the first player to touch the ball after returning to the playing court or does so to avoid a violation has committed a violation. Editorial changes, setting the direction of the initial era. Alternating possession control is established and the initial direction of the possession era is set toward the opponent's basket when, entering an overtime period, the ball is placed at the disposal of a free thrower after a common foul when the bonus free throws are in effect. The rationale that clarifies that the possession era is set toward the opponent's basket when the ball is placed at the disposal of the free thrower after a common foul when the bonus foul rule is in effect, which can only occur entering an overtime period. A foul, 4-19-13. A team foul is any personal, personal or technical foul except indirect technical foul, which is charged to either team. All team fouls are counted to reach the bonus free throws for the quarter in which they are assessed. The rationale? clarifies that team fouls are only counted toward the bonus in the quarter which they are assessed. Shot clock guidelines. The shot clock operator shall stop the timing device and reset to the full amount when any of the following occurs, a single technical foul or a violation. All technical fouls per National Federation Rule 10 penalty result in the change of possession, two free throws, and the ball to the division line, unless simultaneous offsetting. Therefore, a full shot clock reset would occur. A violation by the defense, such as a kick ball, will result in a full reset to the offensive team, and a violation by the offense will result, result in a turnover and thus a full reset. Officials National Federation Basketball Signals. Signal 7 clarified the description to include free throw violation. Signal 19 removes bonus free throw signal and includes bonus free throws in the title of number 19, single free throw. Points of emphasis, uniforms, equipment, and apparel. Coaches and school administrators must ensure that legal uniforms are being ordered and purchased from manufacturers slash distributors. If in doubt, prior to purchasing the uniform, equipment, or apparel, 
confirm legality with our office. A National Federation uniform guide was created to illustrate the proper uniform design. That document and animated presentations can be found on the National Federation website. Requests to make an exception to Rule 3-4 uniforms must be submitted to our office before the event for approval. Uniform requirements may not be altered by mutual agreement between schools or coaches. Uniforms, equipment, and apparel. Uniform bottoms do not have to match the torso of the uniform. With the adoption of Rule 345, uniform bottoms must be like color among the teammates. The bottom style may differ for every player, but the color must be the same. Rolling and tucking of a uniform bottom is permissible as long as the compression tights or sleeves, if worn, are color compliant. Undershirts, if worn by the home team, shall be white, hemmed, not have frayed or ragged edges, and if they have sleeves, they all shall be the same length. Undershirts, if worn by the visiting team, must be a single solid color similar to the torso of the jersey or solid black and meet all other requirements as listed above. Team members may wear either the single solid color or black, but not both. Arm sleeves, knee sleeves, lower leg sleeves, compression shorts, and tights are permissible. Anything worn on the arm and or leg is a sleeve except a knee brace and shall meet the color restrictions. Sleeves and tights and compression shorts shall be black, white, beige, or the predominant color of the jersey, and the same color shall be worn by teammates. All sleeves and tights and compression shorts shall be the same solid color and shall be the same color as the headband or the wristband worn. Bench decorum. Through the enforcement of the existing rules, coaches and bench personnel are expected to exhibit appropriate and acceptable behavior. Coaches are expected to remain in the box. Coaches who go beyond the 28-foot line or, more importantly, onto the playing court gain a distinct advantage that is not within the spirit or the intent of the rule. While the bench area expands during a timeout, the bench area does not extend beyond the 28-foot line. Coaches and other bench personnel may not move to the extended bench area until the timeout begins to ensure bench personnel do not create inadvertent contact with the opposing players still on the playing court. Coaches who leave the expanded bench area to engage officials inappropriately are subject to a warning or a bench technical foul. Misconduct including taunting, baiting, finger pointing, trash talking, or using inappropriate gestures by players, coaches, or bench personnel is not permitted. Players and coaches are not allowed to disrespectfully or inappropriately address or gesture at an official after a ruling is made on the court. Player and coach behavior, which is the official's judgment, is determined to be a taunt to an opponent or disrespectful act toward an official shall be penalized by assessing a technical foul. Assistant coaches are not authorized to approach the scores table at any time. The head coach is permitted to go to the scores table to request a 60-second timeout to confer with personnel regarding correctable errors or to prevent or rectify a timing or scoring mistake or error or an alternating possession mistake. Points of emphasis, throw-ins, proper location. Proper inbound spots contribute to the overall flow and the fairness of the games. Coaches design specific plays and strategies based on where the ball will be put in play. It is therefore essential for game officials to be diligent in administering the ball at the proper throw-in location. Anytime a team causes the ball to go out of bounds, the throw-in occurs from the spot where the ball went out of bounds. When a violation, defensive foul before the bonus or dead ball, inadvertent whistle, held ball, etc. occurs that will result in a throw-in, officials must ask themselves three questions. Where did the violation slash foul occur? Is the throw-in team in their front court or back court? Where was the ball when the interruption occurred? When a team will gain or retain possession in its back court after a violation or foul prior to the bonus or the stoppage in play, play will resume with a throw-in at either the point of the interruption or the designated spot nearest to where the violation or the foul occurred. When a team will gain or retain possession in its front court, play will resume with a throw-in from one of the four designated front court spots. Point of emphasis, end of game protocol. As the game nears the end of playing time, officials need to remind each other of the game ending procedures to prevent potential issues. Late game timeouts could provide the best opportunities to confirm with the score, scorebook accuracy with the score, the number of timeouts remaining for each team and the number of team fouls impact on the bonus. Remind the timer to watch 
officials for clock start and clock stop signals and be prepared to assist in aiding officials regarding whether a last second shot was released prior to the end of time. During a late game timeout, the officials should discuss the following among their crew. Last second shot responsibility. Unless the ball is tapped, no try can be attempted on a throw in or a free throw with .3 seconds or less remaining. Intentional fouls are two shots and a designated spot throw in. If a foul occurs as the game ending horn sounds and the score can be tied or the game won by ensuing free throws, the official must administer their free throws. If they will not change the outcome, they shall not be attempted. If the score is tied at the end of regulation time, inform each team and the table officials of the overtime procedures, length of the overtime period, an additional 60 seconds timeout, etc. End the game protocols. Following the game ending horn, the referee should confirm with the score that everything is correct and leave the floor with their partners. In situations when the score is separated by three points or less, it might be necessary to verbally confer with the score. In games when the margin of victory is larger, a visual signal such as a thumbs up will suffice. Be confident everything is correct as the official's jurisdiction ends when the entire crew leaves the visual confines of the playing area. If you have any questions regarding the new basketball rules, please contact the AAA office.